tuning into the Warren Christmas Village channel. On today's episode, I'm going to finally paint and finish up the flocking and all the good stuff on these terrain bits that I made about a, I don't know, a year ago or whatever and just never got around to painting. But since it's been so pretty outside, I took all my projects outside and thought I'd do a tutorial. Here are some of the modular bits of the sponge foo walls with some uh, green flock. I made two of those and this video covers all the good basics including dry brushing, um, how to add texture to your XPS foam. Uh, there's some highlights as well. I don't know how you can see this but uh, you can see the highlights and lowlights on the dirt mud and then I also got in close and did some detail on the rocks. Uh, they kind of look fantasy. Some of them kind of look like fruity pebbles but <laughs> There's the other piece that I made, and uh, they're made on XPS foam and then chunks of cereal box. That one has Magic with Unicorn on it. Uh, <laughs> and you can once again see how I have lights and darks in the dirt to give a nice depth of field, which looks great from a distance when you're playing. So the first thing we're going to do for our terrain pieces is add a little texture to the XPS foam. And you can see the bottom here, it's just cardboard and XPS foam, but I want to add a little texture to give it a more of a natural look. So I start off with some Arlene's Tacky Glue, which is a thick PVA. You can use any kind of PVA you want. And I put up my brush and dip it in water just to thin out the PVA glue and paint all over the piece of terrain. The next step is to add the patio paver sand to the terrain piece. Here is the brand that I use. It's a multi-purpose and comes with a lot of variety of sized grit. It's perfect for adding to natural landscape terrain. Tap off any extra and then we'll sweep that up and use it again for other parts of the terrain. I repeat the process over and over everywhere that I want there to be some of this paver sand. And I'm telling you, this stuff really does look great. So with a dry, clean brush, I go ahead and sweep up extra and then repeat the process for all the crafts. All the crafts. want to create a pathway down the middle which I think is going to look nice with the paint job so I thought I would add an extra layer of the uh, sand gravel patio paver and what I did is I put on a thick layer of the Arlene's tacky glue and then dip my brush in the water and blended out all the glue on top of this piece now I waited until this was somewhat dry first I didn't let it sit overnight but I waited until it was mostly dry. And here's what it looked like afterwards. And then I gathered all the bigger bits of rocks and put those on top. So I did this after I had done all my terrain pieces with the patio paper and in the sun. So I guess that would give uh, someone an idea of how long it took. So for some of the details, I pulled out some of the larger rocks and put those into the pathway with a little bit of extra Arlene's tacky glue. And here's what everything looks like when it's finished. At this point, let all your pieces dry overnight. And on the monolith part with the cobblestones, I went a little extra with the patio paver and the sand and the grit so I decided to scrape some off to show a little bit more of the weathered cobblestone effect. The next step is to seal all of the terrain pieces. This is to not only protect the XPS foam from the chemicals of the spray paint rattle cans but also to prime as well as add an extra layer of adhesion for all the patio pavement that we mixed grout sand that we put on top. Here's what everything looked like with all the primer, the sealant still wet. So what I did is now we have to let everything sit once again overnight to harden up 
And what happens is this hardens up your terrain and gives it a protective layer of uh, late acrylic, a plastic on top. Now I did miss some spots, you can see here. So I just took a little paintbrush and did some fine detailing to the piece. Here's what it looked like the next day. Everything's dried, calmed, everything settled down, dried up, looking great. And uh, everything hardened up really well. So now it's time to take these primed pieces, the black bombed pieces. They're not really black bombed, but it's kind of the same effect. And I'm going to put the rattle cans on there. So for the parts that I want to be gray, I'm going to paint those gray. For the parts that I want to be red, I'm going to paint those red. And for the parts that I want to be brown, like the dirt, I paint those the dirt colors. It's pretty simple and straightforward. This adds another layer of protection and seals help seal in the terrain piece. Here's the terrain piece all nice and dried up, sealed, primed, and look at that detail on that. So this ha also has some rock that I want to paint gray. So here comes the gray spray paint. This paint uh, was kind of older and it has a gloss to it, but it's the brown that I used, so I went with it. And here is the red that I used for the cobblestones. I went ahead and cleared out the valve because this paint's kind of old, so I went ahead and sprayed a little bit on the cardboard first to make sure it was going to spray properly before I took a risk of spraying uh, on the piece of the terrain. So there you go. I can, you can see I go pretty heavy with that. It's going to dry up really nice though. Back to the browns, because I want to go ahead and paint some more faux dirt on my pieces. I want these two pieces to have a similar dirt effect to pull in the look together of all the pieces. So we're starting to get there, putting on some base coats, moving away from the monochromatic look of the terrain. And uh, you can see the texture of the patio paver, looking good. Lots of nice grit on there. Here are the modular sponge foo walls, which are just nice little touches. And there's an overhead shot of where we're going. So now it's time to move in with the acrylic paint. And uh, I wanted to lighten up this brown here on the dirt. So when painting, it's always good to have three colors. You wanna have a dark, a medium and a light. So in this brown, I, this is going to be my, uh, on the. The medium dark side, I actually used more than three colors on this project, but you'll see what happens when I start working with the paint. So the concept is to take and go from dark to light. My paint was a little too thick for my taste. I buy a clearance stuff a lot, and that was a clearance paint. So I watered it down with the, in a little dish and you can see what I'm doing here is just taking that same little bit of paint that I had and spreading it out and just blending. Just keep spreading and blending. And here is a little sample. You can see the light on top of the dark and I'm just gonna keep adding some more paint, dabbing as I go along. Not really adding thick amounts of paint, just slowly layer upon layer upon layer, but enough to coat everything. So it's kind of, um, it's why I'm not really speeding up the video. I want folks to be able to see what I'm doing. And then on the sides here, I didn't really go too thick with the paint. Next is I need to prime my miniature. I'm gonna use some really nice primer on that. Here we go are the colors for the bricks that I'm gonna use. I've got some dark reds, I've got a brown, some oranges, some bright reds. So what I'm gonna do now is do some detailing. Here's the brush I used, a little tiny flat brush. 
do some detailing on the cobblestones. Now this gets another layer of wash on top, so this will tone down the colors quite a bit. And here we go. Here's a little overhead shot of progress where we're at. Things are still kind of all in the same value, kind of getting boring. So next up is a this greenish gray paint that I'm going to add to the base coat. It's not a radical change, but I think it adds a nice little layer of depth. And once again, I didn't go super thick with it, just kind of kept spreading it on so I can let a little bit of the other gray peek out from underneath. And this is going to be our next layer of paint. Don't forget to get all of the sponge foo as well. Include all the pieces of the terrain that uh, I wanted to have this gray color. Here is a side-by-side. -side. The left has the green-gray, and the right is just the plain old rattle can. Once again, here's a side-by-side. -side. You can see there's a subtle difference in the colors. So now I pulled out a light gray, and this I'm going to do for some pseudo fake detail highlights. I don't really know what to call them, but I hit the higher points of the rock bits as well as the top parts of the sponge foo and it's almost a dry brush it's a little heavier than a dry brush would be um, I tend to do really heavy-handed dry brushes anyway I'm trying to learn how to lighten that up a little bit but um, I'm including all the footage so you can see uh, how I tap out my brush I'm going to show how much paints on there and then get some close-ups so you can see what actually happened here's another side-by-side -side. the one in the front does not have the highlights and here is the piece and the progress we've made so far you can start to see the three-dimensionality is coming out We've got some highlights going on in our piece and some low lights going on our piece. It's beginning to get that three-dimensional shape. Here's everything all together with all the highlights and I'm just gonna show why I love modular design so much. You can just easily have a bunch of different kinds of different terrain. And here is our terrain with the light gray pseudo dry brush highlights added to the pieces. And I went ahead and painted the dirt as well as did some of the detailing on the rocks so we could have a before and after. And this is what it looks like before. And then I'm gonna turn it into something that's gonna match this. And I'm going to show you how I did that on this tutorial. So right here is where we're going to create the pathway. I'm going to imitate these colors the best I can because I really don't remember which browns I used on that. So we're going to start off with a light brown and uh, more of a medium brown. I'm going to treat the base coat as our dark brown and then we're going to do some detailing on the rocks. So the next step is I want to you want to always go from the darkest to the lightest. So the next step is to go ahead and add this brown, tap out a lot of the color cuz once again I don't want to go super heavy on it and I'm leaving some of the black edges there to uh, give a little bit of the, the depth. You'll see in a minute how it all works out when I start adding in the tans and the whites and blend it all together. Just keep your amount of paint on the project and just keep dabbing it and, and moving it all around. 
It's the best way I can describe it. See how I'm going up and down with my brush like that? That's picking up the paint and moving it all around and then blending out my edges. side by side of the two pieces and you can see the path is starting to take shape. The next color that I'm going to bring into the piece is a light tan, almost a little bit darker, like a dark khaki. Now I wait until everything is dry. See, touching this, everything is dry, 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 dry. And then once again, I put a little bit of paint on there and then a little bit heavier than a dry brush. Once again, see, I've, I've got too much paint on there. So take some of it off and it's the same concept that we just did, except uh, let some of the work that we just did show through. So I wanna keep this more in the middle center part. What I'm trying to replicate here in this terrain piece is the wear and tear of a dirt pathway. The dirt pathways tend to be um, treaded on more in a certain area. And on this path, I wanted that to be in the center. So the edges are go a little dark. So it's almost like an ombre going from light to dark. The next step is to add in some white because to get this effect right here, see the side by side? See how we're starting to develop a nice little pathway? So I wanna lighten this color up a little bit. And once again, I'm doing a really, 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 really little bit of white paint on there. And then what I'm going to do after this is just blend everything together. So just trust me on this. Watch, work through the process. You'll see how I do it. It's going to take a little bit. And I, I try and film most of this so folks can see how I do my paint. And once again, it's the same brush that I've been using this whole time, this beat up flat, kind of stiff bristled brush. And I'm using the same amount of paint and just dabbing it up and down. So I'm taking it and moving it from certain spots of the terrain piece to others. And if there's a little section that has more white than the other, that's fine. That just means that's more of a raised up highlighted part, or maybe that part of the pathway has been worn down a little bit. Now this looks a little meh, but just wait a minute. I'm gonna get a piece of paper towel with some water on it, and we're gonna blend this out so it's gonna get a real nice kind of airbrushed effect to it. But right now I'm just gonna work in what paint I do have into the pathway, and then um, you'll see how it turns out. It turns out pretty cool. So while the white paint is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and dip a clean piece of paper towel into some uh, clean water. And then I'm going to use this and dab it all over the pathway to blend everything out and just kind of spread the edges to a nice, really airbrush effect. Here are some overhead progress shots of all three pieces. And the next step that we're gonna do is some white highlights. And this is where I'm gonna do my best at trying to dry brush, which I do not do very well. Um, 
this part right here and this part right here the edges are really important because that's the top part of the terrain and what people are going to look at and then i also dry brushed a little bit of the uh patio paver that we use the grit pulls up the dry brush really nice so bear with me as i do my best at putting some highlights on the terrain pieces Once again, I like to do the trick with the wet paper towel to help blend out my edges because I tend to go a little hard sometimes with the paint. But you can see right here where it's starting to take shape. Here's with the highlights and we're going to go to an overview shot so you can see the progress from afar. This side has some highlights on it with the white and the piece on the right, the rock on the right, does not. It has the light gray highlights but it doesn't have the white highlights so you can compare and contrast the two bits right here i'm just going to dry brush this little bit of rock for you so you can see how i do it And I'm also going to do a little bit of the white highlighting on the edges of all the brickwork. I especially like to hit the top part because that's where most folks are going to be viewing it from, from about three feet away. So uh, this really helps make things pop and I think it adds a nice little detail. are going to go back over here and start getting to work, Linda. Here's a shot of all the gray parts of the terrain pieces with the dry brush highlight, including the monolith, the sponge foo, as well as the rocks and the one piece. I think it really adds a nice level of detail to the piece and really makes the terrain pop. So I would highly recommend you go ahead and do a little highlight on your terrain. The next step I'm going to do is color in individual stones, do a little detailing on the pathways. Here's my color selection that I'm gonna use for the rocks. And then afterwards, it's time to flock. So if you look closely, you can see the details of the different colors that I used and just picked out some stones and painted them. So that's what I'm gonna to do to this piece over here.
Here's everything painted in with the rocks. And I also added some purple to the crumbled, weathered cobblestone monolith ruin. There's a close-up of the monolith. You can see how I painted it. And now it's time for a black wash. And I do roughly 50-50. It's hard for me to say exactly what the recipe is because I just use an uh, inexpensive black acrylic paint and water and paints that come with different consistencies. So it has to be watery enough that it can get into all the cracks and crevices. And I went ahead and videoed most of this so you can see the process and how much of the black wash I put on. Now, I did not like how it the bricks were still bright, so I went back in off camera and painted those in a little darker and added uh, highlights. But I just wanted to show you what the black wash procedure was like, and I mean wash everything, including all the bricks, all the little pathways with the rocks on all the other pieces. Wash it all. So this is a little bit of a lengthy clip, but I decided to include all the details for you so you can see how much wash I put on. And I've also got a little hack that shows how to get rid of too much liquid. So kick back and enjoy. If you have too much black wash on there, grab a paper towel and sop up any extra. And here is what the piece looks like all finished with the monolith painted, the cobblestones color corrected, and the flock and the detailing of the foliage is added. Here's the other piece that I went ahead and finished as well off camera. You can see the rocks have been painted in. They've been washed down as well with the black wash. Flock has been applied to all parts of the ruins to get that overgrown look like nature is reclaiming back the stonework and now it's time to flock on uh, this piece and i'm going to show you how to do it but first i decided that i needed to 
expand this pathway a little bit. It just seemed too narrow to me. Granted, it was in scale, but I just didn't think that the natural flow of foot traffic would would be the be this small. So I added some more paint, and in the process, I had an oopsie. So I thought this would be a great chance to show how to take some mistakes off your terrain piece. So since my layers are dry, other than the fresh paint, I just dabbed a paper towel in some water and just kept dabbing on top of the wet paint. And eventually it runs down the side of the terrain piece as well as adheres to the piece of paper towel and the paint is no longer attached to your terrain piece. Pretty nifty, huh? And back to expanding the pathway. So you can see how I just made this just a little bit bigger. To apply my flock, I like to use the Arlene's Tacky Glue because it is a nice thick solid PVA, but you can use whatever you want. Some tutorials will also use a watered down PVA, but I like to do uh, more on the PVA and less on the water. I do water it down, so I just take some that same old brush with some paint water, nothing really fancy, and just dab it down to smooth out the PVA a little bit just like that. So everywhere I put my PVA is where the flock is going to go and it will have a nice grass effect to it. So I drop my uh, flock down and then I take my finger and I push it into the glue because sometimes that PVA is really thick, that Arlene's is really thick, so I want to make sure everything gets stuck in nice. And it just kind of merges with the glue and the terrain piece. Now I cooked up my own color because I just didn't like any of the two greens that I had. So I put in some two medium greens and then I added some yellow flock to get a more chartreuse spring color mix. As the glue begins to settle and set, sometimes you get these interesting little shapes and uh, of glue and flock combos. So I just smash these down even further and then add more flock to it. Add another layer of flock. Now the glue will dry clear, but I just want to get an extra thick layer with lots of glue on this product because it is going to be going to a public game shop and being used by lots of every people. And here you go, here are pictures of the finished pieces, flocked and ready to go. I've went ahead and washed all the pieces, including the pathway before the flock. And I think everything turned out pretty nice. The last step, and this is an optional step, is to add my little miniature to scale pieces of foliage. Some of these are for war games like the Army Painter, and this set right here is from the Railroad Shop. So you'll just need a pair of tweezers for this. You don't have to use tweezers, but these can be pretty delicate, and I find it's easier to apply them with some tweezers. They come in all different varieties of foliage. So just take this one right here is uh, some some bushes or something. So just take my tweezers, put some more 
uh, Arlene's Tacky Glue on the base and apply it to my terrain piece. I use these kind of sparingly. Uh, I don't really want to overcrowd my piece with this, but um, I think they add a really nice detail to the piece. And thank you very much for watching. That concludes this series on how to construct some ruins out of sponge foo, XPS foam, and some basic craft supplies. And if you've made it this far through the tutorial, which has been quite lengthy, I thank you very much from the sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for the War and Christmas Village channel, so that way you'll be notified about future content. Thank you very much again, and have a great one.